Welcome to episode 150 of Angela Watson's Truth for Teachers. I'm your host, Angela Watson, and I'm here to speak life, encouragement, and truth into the minds and hearts of educators and get you energized for the week ahead. Today, I'm going to talk about how to deal with controlling, overbearing, and micromanaging parents. Visit truthforteachers.com to ask a question or to share your thoughts in the comments. This episode is brought to you in part by Brains On. Have you ever listened to podcasts with your students? It's a great way to engage their minds and spark their imagination without relying on screens. One great podcast to start with is a kid's science show called Brains On. It explores real science questions from kids. Students will learn things like how dogs smell so well and what water is made of and how human voices make sound. Brains On has over 100 episodes, and you can listen for free to Brains On as well as to a kid's history podcast called Forever Ago by going to brainson.org, or you can subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. So today I'm going to be responding to a listener question that I received. At truthforteachers.com, there is a forum where you can submit your questions. And there's also a link to SpeakPipe where you can leave me a voicemail message, which I can then play on the podcast and respond to your question. So if there's something you'd like to hear me answer in a future episode, feel free to submit your question as well. This listener actually wrote in on behalf of her colleagues because she was so concerned about them. She described the situation in detail, and I'm going to read part of it to you because I think you will find it really validating to hear that you're not the only one facing situations like this. Here's what she wrote. Hi, Angela and team. I'm hoping that you can answer these questions. How do I stop focusing on parents and worrying how they will affect my job security and my choices as an educator? How do I stop worrying about conferences with parents? How can I teach without constantly feeling like I'm being watched, analyzed, judged, and monitored by parents? Or how can I let go of the fact that they're doing those things and I can't change it? She continues, the problem is trying to have a healthy mindset toward parents that are extremely critical and overbearing. Some of my colleagues have said things like, I can't sleep until I have this conference. I can't stop thinking about it. How am I supposed to let go of what they said? I'm so anxious about everything. They will rehash every email and every conference multiple times to multiple people. It's a very extreme reaction, and I'm honestly pretty worried about them. At our school, we deal with intense parents a lot. I think it's the anxiety of feeling like you're just always being watched or monitored that is creating this kind of intense anxiety in my colleagues. They never feel like they can just teach. They worry that they're always being reported against. And it's also evident that the kids are expected to report about school at home. Here are some examples of what parents have done to give you a little more background information. They've attacked teachers for offering before school help because they thought it should be happening during the school day. They've scrutinized the pacing guide information and tried to tell teachers which skills, quote unquote, should be taught and when. They made accusations that reading and writing conferences weren't happening in the classroom even though they actually were and the students just didn't know because the teacher didn't use that language with them to describe it. And they've compared their child to other students frequently and don't want homogenous grouping because they don't want their kids in the quote unquote slow group. I will say, she wraps up, that my administration has been very supportive and has stood by teachers. So that's really not the issue. I can't imagine how much worse it would be if that were not the case. Thanks for any future advice you have or give. I love your work and you've done so much to help my anxiety over school. I just wish it were that easy to fill up someone else's mind with these mindset shifts. So here's my response. Let me say right up front that I'm really glad that administration is being supportive in this situation. To everyone listening, you should not have to defend yourself alone or figure out the response to difficult parents by yourself. If the situation's really out of control to the point where you are being stalked or harassed or bullied, your administrators need to be involved in this situation and any interactions that you have with the parent should be held with the administrator present. You do not have to put up with abuse and you shouldn't be expected to manage these problems alone. 
Now, for the remainder of this episode, I want to clarify that I'm not talking about abusive situations. I'm talking about the type of situation described by this listener, where parents are constantly questioning your judgment as a teacher, or gossiping about you with other parents, or using their child as an informant, and just going over your head with complaints. I want to approach this by helping you understand the mindset and motivation of these kinds of parents. If you react on just the surface level, you're going to get stuck in a tit for tat kind of situation. And you can't win that because you as the employee of the school have to be professional. When they go low, you have to go high. You can't play at this game that they're playing. You're never going to get the result you want if you're simply reactive or you get defensive. So we're not going to talk about you know, tactical strategies and witty comebacks you can use. And instead, let's try to shift into the parent's mind and understand where they're coming from. Because when you do that, you will not only have compassion. And yes, seriously, you can develop compassion for all human beings, including the parents who make your life miserable. And that compassion will help you figure out how to respond from the wisest part of yourself. And understanding the parent's motivation will help you figure out what triggers the parent so that you can be proactive instead of just being anxious all the time and sort of waiting for the next attack. Right now, both you and the parent are making fear-based responses. And since you can't control other people's behavior, the place to begin is by understanding that fear and choosing to respond from a higher place within yourself. Remind yourself that this situation is not personal. Parents become micromanaging and hypercritical of their kids' teachers when they're feeling fearful. This is a coping mechanism on the part of the parent. They're trying to alleviate their worst fear, which is that their child will not get a good education or not keep up with his or her peers and won't grow up to be independent and successful. And I think every parent has these fears. They just manifest in different ways for different people. For many parents who are high achievers themselves, their response to these feelings is to try to influence as many things as possible. They want to feel like they have done everything they could possibly do to help their child. Because one of the worst feelings on earth is to feel like you failed someone you love, particularly a child, to feel like you didn't protect them or advocate for them. And sometimes the feared outcome is big like they won't get into college. And sometimes it's smaller, like, oh, they should have gotten an A on this test and they got a B. But if the parent doesn't do everything they feel they could do and the child is still not successful, then they will feel partially responsible and they don't want that guilt. So while it may seem like the parent is placing all the blame and responsibility on you, know that they're doing that because inside they feel personally responsible and they feel helpless. They are releasing their pride and joy into the care of the school system for six hours a day and entrusting their child to strangers. And that's scary, particularly if your child is struggling academically or socially, and particularly when you have very high aspirations for your child. Even when it seems like the parent is out to get you and has a vendetta against you, the source of that vendetta is his or her own fears. It's not about you, it's about their insecurities and anxiety. And you have to keep telling yourself this so that their criticism doesn't impact your self-esteem or cause you to doubt yourself too much as a teacher. If their child was in another class, they'd be questioning everything that that teacher did as well. All of their fears are being projected onto you because you are responsible for a significant portion of their child's education. And there's not very many things that cause people to get more upset more quickly than feeling like their children or their family members aren't being treated well or are getting less than what they deserve. Micromanaging parents at their core want only the best for their children. And the reality of whether or not you're actually giving the best is almost beside the point because it's subjective, right? They perceive that their child might be missing out, might not be getting the optimal thing. And that's what creates the fear. Now, this motivation, this desire to have their child get the best is justified. Keep that in mind, too. All parents want what's best for their children. And all parents can and should advocate on behalf of their kids. 
we want to avoid the defense mechanism as educators of just saying things of saying things like, you know, parents should just let me do my job. Because if it was your child who you felt wasn't getting everything that needed to be successful, you would feel frustrated as well. And you know, just as well as the parents know, that the squeaky wheel gets the oil, particularly with big bureaucracies like a school system. We don't need to place ourselves in a seat of judgment against parents and determine for them what they should and shouldn't care about. It's just not helpful. It's not useful for us. Anytime we're focusing our time and energy into complaining about how we think other people should behave or how other people should parent their children. Now, you might not like hearing this part, but I'm going to say it anyway, because I think it's a really important key to having better relationships with students' parents. It is not up to educators to determine when and how parents should be involved with their kids' education. Somehow in our minds, we have this ideal way that we believe parents should act. It's a perfect balance. And if they cross that balance too far one side or the other, then we accuse them of either being overly involved or not being involved enough. And in some ways, these expectations that we place on parents are pretty unreasonable. I'll speak for myself here because I fell into that trap all the time. I felt like parents should support everything I do. They should send in supplies. They should volunteer. They should return every signed paper right away. They should read with their kids. They should work with their kids at home on the skills they're falling behind in. And if they weren't tuned in to what was happening at school and doing those things, I complained. I didn't think they were being supportive. But when they were tuned in, on some level, I expected them to do so mindlessly. Don't think about it. Don't question me. Don't suggest ways that I can teach your child better. Don't tell me how I can improve. Now, I would like to think that I responded to parents in a constructive way when they did those things, but inside, I was feeling very defensive. It bothered me that they dared to try to offer input on their own children. In other words, I can make a judgment about how you do your job as a parent, but you can't make any judgments or offer any insight or suggestions about how I do my job as the teacher of your child. The reality is that involved parents are often critical thinkers. They're paying attention to what their child is learning as they should, and they're reflecting on their child's progress and feelings. These kinds of parents will frequently have questions about what's happening at school, and some of the things that they learn about they may not agree with. They're educated on these issues, they're paying attention, and they're going to have their own ideas about what should and shouldn't be happening. So when they don't agree with you on what is best, or don't agree that you are in fact providing what is best, they can react in ways that seem very unfair and very irrational. At the core, you both want the same thing. And that's what's really key to remember here. You both want what's best for the child. You are in agreement about that. The only disagreement is about what that best actually looks like. Many times parents are making you the scapegoat for the aspects of the school system which aren't meeting their child's needs. I'm sure many of the things that you're doing that the parents don't like are not things that are actually your choice. They're just the result of limited time or resources or restraints that are placed on you by the school or by district policies. And once again, the source of the frustration is not really about you. I wish that I had a magic solution to fix this. The best thing you can do for yourself is to ensure that you're working at a school where your administrators have your back and will support you when you're criticized. You also wanna be reflective on your practice without constantly second guessing yourself. That's the balance there. Be open to the grain of truth in whatever the parent is saying, even if they don't say it in a polite way. So just because you don't like the way they said it, that doesn't disregard the fact that there may be something in there that you could use to help yourself become better. Make sure you're always growing and being the best you can be, but don't allow that process of growth to cause you to get down on yourself or doubt your abilities. This is the perpetual balance that we have to maintain um, as educators. Beyond that, I encourage you to be proactive 
rather than defensive. Remind yourself this is not about you and there is nothing you could do to make every single parent happy 100% of the time. This is about parents becoming controlling in an attempt to ensure the best possible education and future for their children. Remind yourself that you are not enemies. Don't allow yourself to be pitted up against the parent, even if the parent is trying to frame it that way. You both have the same goal. Keep reminding the parent of that. We both want what's best for the child. Working together for the good of the child is your goal. And while I'm telling you this, I realize that none of it is easy to do. Of course, it's not easy to do. And it's very stressful. And it's a very emotional process. I understand all of these, you know, feelings of just anxiety and doubt. But learning to make this balance is essential to your well-being as a teacher. Create some boundaries and protect your free time. You know, this teaching job, this, this job that is stressing you out is just one small part of your life. You don't have to be dealing with this and thinking about this all evening and all weekend long. Let parents know they can email you whenever they want, but you will only read and respond to their messages from, let's say, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday to Friday. Protect your evenings and weekends so that you are not constantly being reminded about problems with parents. Don't allow yourself to ruminate on the problems constantly. Don't spend all your free time complaining about it to everyone who will listen. When you finally get away from the school building, don't bring that problem home. You have to change your thinking here. You are in control of your thoughts. You can choose the thoughts that you think. Choose what what you're thinking about. You can practice not replaying conversations in your head. You can practice not letting your mind rush ahead to all the possible confrontations that could happen in the future. Your thoughts create your feelings. And the way that you think and feel determines how you experience your life and how much you're able to enjoy it. You can't allow a handful of parents to steal your joy and enthusiasm for this work. You must decide that what happens on Friday at 2 p.m. is not going to take over your whole evening and weekend. Take charge of your thoughts. Notice what you are giving energy and attention to. And finally, remind yourself that you can do anything for 10 months. You can survive just about any kind of working conditions. If you're listening to this when this episode was first released, there's only a few months left in the school year, and then you get a break, and then you can start fresh with a new group of families in the fall. You can handle anything for a few more months. Make the determination that you will choose compassion, compassion for the parents, compassion for yourself, instead of just reacting from a place of judgment and shoulds. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be worth it. Want more than just a weekly podcast episode from me? I'd love to also send you a weekly message of encouragement via email. I'll reach out each Sunday evening with a short message that's designed to help you feel more prepared and inspired and motivated for the week ahead. It's not a newsletter or a bunch of announcements. This goes out to over 85,000 educators. So I put just as much thought into crafting this weekly written message to my email list as I do into crafting my podcast episodes. And it's entirely unique content that you won't find anywhere else online. Just go to the cornerstoneforteachers.com slash subscribe and you can sign up. That's the cornerstoneforteachers.com slash subscribe.